I'm Jeff Lee. I lead the cloud architecture team here at Foundation Medicine. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about who are we as a company, what do we do, one of the challenges we have, how DataSync addresses that challenge, and what's our eye on the future with DataSync at our company. So, who are we? Foundation Medicine is a patient-focused company. We provide comprehensive genomics profiling for cancer patients so we can recommend treatments and clinical trials because we believe that every patient can benefit from this information to better inform their care. This is how we can collaborate towards improving cancer care today, tomorrow, and together. And one of the things that drives us at Foundation is how do we get this information into the hands of our patients as quickly as possible? Every minute counts. One of the things we identified is how do we move data from our on-prem into the cloud and how do we do it efficiently and quickly? So the next few slides, I'll kind of dive into that. So, as I mentioned, we perform these genomics profiling tests. It's a lot of crunching of numbers, crunching of DNA. And all these sample, all this data is being produced at labs. So samples come to our labs, and the lab devices produce all this data that we have to process. These labs run 24-7 in batches, one device at a time, what have you. The other part of it is that we're growing globally. So not only do we have, uh, we have multiple labs growing, um, and all of the lab devices are actually exponentially increasing the data set that they're producing. Because as the lab technology grows and improves, the more data you get. So all of these things lead to some challenges that we're trying to address. Uh, because the labs have to run on premise, we have to have all the on-premise challenges we have, which are how do you store the data locally? How do you scale that storage? How do you scale the network to bring that data into the cloud? People, time to maintain all the on-premise infrastructure, space, power requirements, lead time to source, all of those exist for all our lab environments that have to run on-premise. The second part to these challenges are we need to have lab devices finish their run before we can begin processing. And I'll get into that a little bit later about why. Now, these lab devices run for 24 plus hours, so they take a long time to run and generate a ton of data, like tens of terabytes every day. So what have we done to try and bring the, cloud, bring the data from on-prem into the cloud? Well. We've tried large batch transfers. As soon as the device is finished, we go ahead and transfer it up to the cloud. That takes a lot of time, because again, lots of data, and if you're gonna move it up after the device is done, it takes a long time to move it up, hours. Another path that we tried is paralyzed transfers. At the point that the device is finished running, just suck up that data as quickly as possible. Just paralyze that transfer, but there could be a bottleneck with the network because now you're putting a lot of stress on the network bandwidth and the throughput. And all, both these paths, while they can work, if it's one device at a time finishing serially, what happens if multiple devices finish all at once? You can have a lot of bottlenecks. Or it can take a really long time to get that data up into the cloud. So what did we do? We built the data transfer utility at Foundation Medicine, DTU for short. At the core of, data, of DTU is DataSync as our data movement engine. We wrap DataSync with uh, event-driven modular components. So we have a component that's a trigger component that's watching our devices. And it says, when there's a new run, let's let DataSync know there's a new run. The scheduler basically tells DataSync how and what are you transferring in this new run and data sync goes ahead and starts moving that data. We also have a monitoring component, and in this component, we're monitoring for success as well as error events. So we know, are we ready to process, or does the operation team that get involved to bring it back? As I mentioned before, 
the lab devices take a long time to finish, 24 plus hours before we begin processing. And the reason for this, the uh, reason why we have to wait for it to finish is that we look at data in two parts, atomicness and integrity. Atomicness to us means that all the data of an entire run is available to process uh, in the cloud. The reason for that is that anything short of 100% of the data, that means that we cannot begin processing. It could fail. That might mean another 24 plus hours of lab time. That means 24 plus hours of a patient waiting for their information. So atomic, this is very important to us. Integrity means what was produced at the lab device is indeed what's in the cloud, point A to point B. How do we ensure that? Together, we consider that completeness of data. Now, what, with this in mind, what we leverage data sync for to address these two things is we basically use data sync to run small batch transfers Focus on the delta of the changed data into the cloud, from the lab to the cloud. What this allows us to do is to spread that data movement over the course of the 24 plus hours in these smaller batches. The way we ensure atomicness is that at the finish of a run, we launch one last batch transfer. That transfer basically kicks off, make sure that all the delta information is up there, and all the data is ready for processing. How we address integrity is that we leverage data sinks, uh, check some checking for data. And what we do is that we spread the integrity check over the course of the four plus hours too, because each batch not only does it transfer the data, but it checks for integrity along the way. This way, we're spreading the data movement and the integrity over that 24 plus period, 24 plus hour period of time. And that's how we ensure completeness of data and we have the best chance of processing that data in the cloud. That's how we guarantee completeness in the shortest amount of time. It's how we get the information into the patient's hands as quickly as possible. So what has been the impact? Well, able to reduce our on-premise storage footprint because now that we have data sync to transfer this data into the cloud, from point A to point B, as soon as we've confirmed this to point B, we don't really need to keep it on-prem, so that on-premise storage footprint can shrink. Also, we can simplify our data life cycling, because in the cloud, once the data's up there, there's a lot of automation that we can do to life cycle our data. And because we're using smaller batches, means the network bandwidth doesn't have to burst so much. So we're just doing over time, a lower network throughput requirements, so we can reduce that footprint as well. From a business standpoint, we are able to reduce our turnaround time, meaning we can get the information to our patient's hands faster. An example of this is our global transfer time went from 24 hours, a giant batch transfer, down to 24 minutes. That's an extra 24 hours, sorry, it's 24 hours less time that somebody has to wait for life-saving information. So what are we looking at into the future? We're not done yet. We're, what we're eyeing on in the future is that data sync as the engine of data movement for us and all these module components that we've built around data sync allow us to add new use cases to moving data from point A to point B. Some of the things that we're looking at is adding additional contracts for cloud-to-cloud -cloud data movement between accounts, and additionally, how do we help our researchers with data movement as well? Now, some of the features that we're gonna look at pretty quickly is how DataSync can configure the bandwidth of a data transfer. And the reason why that's important is that as we try to reach out to more labs, not every lab site's created equal. Some lab sites don't have the enterprise network throughput that you might need. There are smaller labs, but we want to reach more patients. That means to reach to more labs. Using DataSync's bandwidth configuration, we can tune the bandwidth depending on the lab site on how much pressure do we put on that network, but still be able to reliably and repeatedly bring that data from the lab to the cloud to begin processing so we can reach more patients. And the last thing is accelerating discovery. Now, 
researchers tend to have larger data sets. In addition to that, they also like to collaborate. So they like to move data from here to there, you know, run their experiments. So we want to look into how do we leverage data sync and DTU to bring the data to the researchers so they can experiment faster. I want to take this opportunity to say it's been quite the journey with the data sync team. Um, we're excited for the future and we're really interested in seeing what new features have, are coming out.